Right, Liz? Yeah, might as well. Okay, you're on. Alrighty then. <laughs> um, welcome here to God is in the House. It's Thursday night and it is the 30th of September already. Um, it's amazing how the time goes by and, and the fall season, you know, the fall season, we're thick into that. Um, but we want to start tonight to um, just to read and, and make it our prayer is uh, taken from Psalm 141, verse 2, and this is from the Passion Translation, that version, and it's it's titled Knowing You and talking about knowing the Lord. So, so this particular passage of scripture says, let my prayer be as the evening sacrifice that burns like fragrant incense, rising as my offering to you as I lift up my hands in surrendered worship. And so we can say, Lord, I delight in you. Lord, we delight in you. May our life be as a fragrant offering. You can say, Lord, I am here. You can, you know, praying along with or speaking along with, speaking out and, and affirming, I am here with you now and, in, and for every moment. I worship you upon an altar of pure devotion. I hold back nothing. I hold nothing back. Each and every one of us, is, if there's anything at all that we've been holding back instead of laying it down at the Lord's feet, instead of putting that upon that altar for pure, for pure devotion, let's hold nothing back. All I desire is to be close to you and to have more of your presence in my life. And is that the cry of your heart? Is that the cry of our hearts? All I desire is to be close to you and to have more of your presence in my life. Wow. Your breath fills my lungs and I exhale with cries of love. So we just breathe it in like your breath fills my lungs and I exhale with cries of love. And I would even insert in here that for Ralph, who is yes. just recovering from a, an open heart surgery, still, still newly recovering, and uh, that the lungs, that his lungs, so I just say, Lord, your breath would fill Ralph's lungs Amen. and he yes. would exhale with the cries of love that's Amen. in his heart for you. Thank you Lord, we say we want you to hear our songs of adoration, mm -hmm. to see the words rising from our heart mm -hmm. and filling the air around us. Lord, let the words rise from our heart, our songs of adoration, mm -hmm. that we would sing a new song of love and adoration for you. And Lord, that we want to see the words that would rise up from our heart and fill the air around us so that it is nothing but pure devotion and worship surrounding us. Lord, we are burning and I am burning with an unquenchable fire, that passion to come even closer. Our heart's desire and our passion is to come even closer to you, Lord. To be consumed by your perfection and purity. Oh God, consume us in your perfection and purity. Where there have been impurities and each and every one of us have things that affect our lives every day, our hearts, our minds, our very being. Lord, where there is any impurities that have entered in through, through any area in our lives, God, no matter where it's come in, if there's any impurities right now in the name of Jesus, you, Jesus. Lord, we release impurities and we say, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for those places that we have not kept as and, and come back to as purity and pure devotion towards you. For Lord, you are in me, you are in us, and you are around us. And I am in you, we are in you. As long as you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we can say, I am in you, you are in me. And we lift up our hands within the atmosphere of your glory. We yes. say, yes, God, let your glory. And we declare that the glory of the Lord shall, shall cover the earth, even as the waters cover the sea. Amen. We just call that into, we just call that in, Lord, that our, our atmosphere in our local presence, but the atmosphere surrounding and going outward is the glory of the Lord that would fill the space in the name of Jesus. So descend upon me, descend upon us in all of your goodness. Lord, we want to smell like you and release the bouquet of your beautiful perfume everywhere we go. 
I'm going to say that again. Lord, we want to smell like you. Yes. And yes. we want to release the bouquet of your beautiful perfume mm. everywhere we go. Yes. And so we say that right now, Lord, I and we let go of every distraction and we invest myself, I invest myself and we invest ourselves fully to this one pursuit. And that is the pursuit in knowing you. And so, Lord, we just, we just say thank you that you fill us. You fill us, oh God. You fill us with your love and let your presence and the perfume of serving you and having your presence surrounding us fill this place and your place, wherever you are in your house. God is in your house. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that's from the Passion Translation. The Passion Translation, and that was uh, was that that was Psalm Psalm 141, one? verse two. Wow. All the way, that's just verse two. Yeah. Yep. That's a long but, verse two. Well, no, the rest of it is the prayer that you offer up. Prayers oh, on fire. Verse two it's plus prayers prayer. on fire. Yeah. Oh yeah. well, you yeah. know the fragrance of that prayer, the sacrifice, of, yeah. the sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, th this is the Hebraic month of Sh Shazvan. Well, there's two ways to spell it. You know, the, probably the correct way and the incorrect way. <laughs> so C H E, you know, S V A N. But I think there is an S H V A N. You know, I think in the Hebrew. Way. Regardless, it's the eighth month, and the eighth month, like uh, this is the, this is the month of um, Manasseh. Last month we were were talking about Ephraim and the double portion and that type of thing. Well, there's a, still a double portion because, you know, they were Joseph's children and Jacob's grandchildren. We're talking about intergenerational blessings that go forth from generation to generation. You know, uh, Jacob, you know, he, he had some bad habits, but, you know, God knew that there was going to be a time where they were going to dance together. No, no, they were going to, uh, no, there, was that a dance that they did all night? Are Jacob? you getting that thing to whack me already? No. I'm no, not. Or it says they were fighting all night. Well, you know, maybe Jacob was fighting, but I don't know if you've ever fought with one of your kids that are two or four years old that you kind of just dance with them and just apply enough pressure that they know that they're being held or that, or maybe they're having some fun. I just want you to know, <laughs> it went all night because God wanted it to go all night. The wrestling. Eventually. And, you know, when Jacob finally came to that place of suddenly surrender, have you ever been to that place of suddenly surrender? This is, we're about suddenly today. Can I kiss you suddenly? <laughs> no, so you didn't get that laugh, you're not fast in the third one. But suddenly means you don't know what's going to happen, right. but it happens, it right? That's right. Can you prepare for suddenly? No. What? Well, okay, that's a good way. You can be ready. You can be ready. Well, I, that's what I like, this purification and purity. You get yourself into your heart's, you know, rend your hearts, not your garments. You know, have your hands and your heart, your head, your whole being in a place of the pursuit of holiness. Oh, do you not think suddenly this is going to happen? Yeah. We, we are, this month is awesome. The eighth month is new beginnings, yes. But it's also the, the month eight stands for resurrection life. Eight new beginnings, the eight that went into the ark. Hmm, into the ark. Well, I, I want something else that went into the ark was an altar. And God says, put an altar in the ark and make sure the fire is hot. Make sure the that fire in the altar is hot and burning the whole time we're there. Wow. Because his presence was in the altar. Are you asking God on the throne of your heart and saying, I want your fire and I want your presence. I want your everything that you are so that I can become pure and ready for everything that you are going to do, in, do to me. Do you think the eight went through a, a challenge? In the ark? Before the ark or after the ark? All of above. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for the challenge that God is going to put you through? He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Hebrews 13, 8, and forever. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Were you ready yesterday? Yeehaw! I was. <laughs> are you ready today for suddenly? We are. Prepared. We are. Ha <laughs> ha. Do we have to wait for tomorrow? If God, Amen. Let let every day 
Wait. Wait. Remember the teaching on wait? How am I spelling wait? Is it W-A-I-T? Or is it W-E-I-G-H-T? The weight and the glory of God every day. Yeah. His glory come down every day. And let the weight, those who, what? In, in uh, Isaiah 40, verse 31, or 28 to 31, it talks about those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Oh, anybody getting worn down lately? Yeah. Oh, man. I need to have the weight of God, the glory of God, I love that word weight the way they have it written there because it means three cord rope being wrapped around you during that time so that whose strength can be renewed? Wow. You are in the, we are in what image? Who are made, are we made in the image of man? No. Are we made in the image of God? Oh, we're not made in the image of the tree of good and evil and knowledge. Anybody got some leaves in their ears? <laughs> or twigs in the wrong place where they're sitting? <laughs> oh, I'm going to whack. Okay, so I just want you to know <laughs> we are made in the image of God. We are made in the image of God. We are made in the substance of God. We have the DNA of Abba Father, Adonai Elohim. So that means we have the DNA of Yeshua HaMashiach and the DNA of the Ruach HaKadosh, the same DNA that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us and has what? Cleaved to us. And what does that mean? You have a new identity. Yes, we know we're a new creation in Christ, but you have a new identity in the DNA. God made you before the beginning of time, so the DNA that he made you out of was, gee, I wonder if it was the substance hmm, that all good things are made of. Absolutely. Doesn't make any junk. So he's just waiting for us to come into a place to fall in love with Yeshua HaMashiach, invite him into our being of, whole, of wholeness and love, of purity and, and, and seeking him. And then what happens? A metamorphosis happens. Mm -hmm. The same thing that happened in... Sinai and in the desert M M Moses said go make a bronze serpent well take some copper take some tin and make a bronze serpent well did they have the technology to do that back then because it takes 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit do they have a volcano that they can hawk in the middle of the desert uh, could they call UPS uh, bring me a big generator uh, how much fire does that take to make 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, that's a lot of straw. Do you think, we had some thunder here last night in Carver. Did you hear it? Yeah. It shook this place. The thunder over here, we had three big cracks. There was about five, but I mean three. Three of them shook the panes. Yeah. Oh. And I'm saying, thank you, Father, for speaking your voice. Yeah. Pay, yes, P-E-Y. Yeah, yes. This is the voice of God that's speaking yeah. right now over all the world, over the just and the unjust. Do you hear my voice? And my thunder is vibrating, vibrating like throwing a pond into, a, a, a stone into a pond, and it's rippling, and that rippling effect went through us last night. Anybody here in Carberry, it, it, it was a rippling effect. When God suddenly does something like that. It cracked really loud in Brandon too. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah, Did you feel the ripples? You guys, oh, yeah. felt it really That's outside. suddenly. Yeah, sitting outside. That's how he speaks. How, how, how many degrees yeah. Fahrenheit do you think might be in that crack of lightning? 3,000 degrees? If God wants it to be, it will be. Yes. I wonder, he says, I'm an all-consuming fire. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 12, 29. Do you think he wants to put the same fire, that the all-consuming fire that he is in you? Yeah. Absolutely. We walk in that power and authority and the same hushpa, huxpa, Holy Spirit power and awe. <laughs> I'm getting close. Yeah, well, oh, well anyway. I, I, yeah. I, I'm excited about some things about suddenly, and we've got two things that we're going to study. This first one we're going to study on 
is the birth of the church, Acts 2, 2, it says suddenly. That's going to be part of this first study. The next one is going to be Paul and Silas when suddenly happened there in prison. Okay? Because he... I'll explain it then. But those are two suddenlies. So there's a whole bunch that I, I that I have taught over the years on suddenly. That these are we're going to do these two. The one thing that was bringing some excitement to me when because Leslie doesn't know my notes, I don't think. No. And uh, you know, the month of Shazvan. Every month, every Hebraic month has everything to do with the Hebraic language. And one of the things with the Hebraic language is smell. Okay. Another one is that, you know, there's always going to be a word or an, a, a, an alphabetical number that's associated with that month. And we're going to get into that. I've, I've taught that on every month. And I thank uh, apostolic, uh, the apostolic, uh, uh, you know, people in my life that have taught me these things and what I've studied in, pa pa you know, Apostle and Pastor Charlotte Baker and now uh, Apostle Vincent Poole down in uh, Texas. Like, he, like we're on the same wave wavelength. Uh, Wow. Love you, Apostle Paul. So in, in saying that, the smell for this month, how many? God's smell that he has chose for the month of Shazvan is myrrh. Myrrh. Isn't that neat, Ralph? Myrrh. And what is myrrh used for? Taking the wrinkles out of dead people. Yeah. It goes into cosmetics. It goes into embalm the dead. How many of you guys are still walking around dead? God's pouring out his myrrh. <laughs> Say, give me another pint. Rub a dub dub in the little club. More myrrh for me. I got to get rid of all these wrinkles or these difficult things in my life. Because Leslie was saying out of Psalm 141 too, that perfection and purity, that's only going to come through the process of what God does of the out of the anointing oil, which is the anointed one, Christ, the Messiah, and the first ingredient of that is myrrh. And I'm not going to go into the teaching, I just find it very interesting that myrrh is the, is, is, is the ingredient for this month. So myrrh, but it's used to what? Sanctify the innermost part of people. To shake the inner man. And, and to bring purity in our thoughts, in our heart, in our actions. It's, he's pouring it upon the just and the unjust. <laughs> Those who are hungry for God are going to say, give me more myrrh, I want to become more pure, and, 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 and your eyes are being opened up to holiness, and you're hungry for etonia in the pursuit of holiness, and you're getting hungry, more hungry for it. But those who are on the dark side, well, they either have an umbrella up or they're saying, well, um, I don't want it. They're just kind of wiping it off. Do you understand? Have you ever wiped off the love of God during your life and mm -hmm. just did it out of spite or did it out of anger or did it out of rejection, did it out of something, out of your own flesh? And God says, I'm doing this to bring healing. Yes. Yeah, I'm doing it to bring healing to you and yet you wipe it off. I'm doing this to bring correction in your life, and yet you don't want to hear it. You don't want to correct yourself. I, I correct the ones I love. And this is part of the process. So, oh my goodness. So, so myrrh is, it, it's called the Holy Spirit, you know, La Chazvan, the month of uh, continual revelation. And the continued revelation of the Messiah in the new beginnings of what God is doing in your life to bring to you a total liberty, a total freedom. The shackles are coming off and everything you think, do, and whatever. I'm coming into total liberty. Is there a scripture that talks about liberty and freedom and the Holy Spirit? Has anybody got that? Stand fast in the liberty where Christ has made us free. But I don't know where okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 says what? Stand fast, therefore. Who's got that one? First Corinthians three sixteen. Did I get it right? I'm going by memory. Mm -hmm. Yes, we'll find it. Six thirteen. Oh uh, no, three sixteen. Three sixteen. I've got it here. It says, uh, "Don't you know that you people are God's temple, and that God's Spirit lives in you?" Okay. 
I'm off a bit. All right, I gotta go dig. I should I should have put it in my notes. I thought I would get it. First Corinthians. I know maybe it's Second Corinthians three sixteen. Uh, maybe that's it. Ah, uh, stand I think. fast therefore in liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That's a good one. Yeah. What scripture is that? Was that the? Oh, okay. Okay. It's, but says the Torah, whenever someone turns to Adonai, the veil is taken away. Mm. Mm. That's, That's Second three, Corinthians three sixteen. Yeah, and seventeen. What comes right after it? Um, oh, I see. Now okay. Adonai in this next. In this text means the spirit, and where the spirit of Adonai is, there is freedom. Yeah, that's and the liberty. And verse eighteen says, "But we." There is no eighteen. Yeah, there yeah. is. Oh, I'm in the wrong. Never yeah. mind. I'm in the Second wrong Corinthians chapter. three. Well, I, I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm in Second Corinthians two, and verse sixteen says, yeah. "To okay. the latter is an aroma." Uh-huh. For we, for fifteen is we are the sweet fragrance of Christ. Oh, praise God! That's good stuff. We <laughs> anyway, I, yeah. But it's Pretty I'm in the wrong nice. chapter. But it, go, get, go ahead with 18 because you're reading out of the, the Hebrew one there, I think. Yes, Judah. So yeah. all of us with faces unveiled see as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, and we are being changed into his very image from one degree of glory to the next by Adonai, the Spirit. Mm-hmm. So we were being changed, hmm, being transformed mm-hmm. into the, his image right. from glory to glory. From weight to weight, the heaviness of his glory, right? So the, it's a process. It's, 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 it's something that we have to go through. So when we, when we go a little, the, the Holy Spirit is the, the Holy Spirit and, and, and living is the focus of the liberty and the freedom to be living it in the anointing. And this particular month is, and the number for this month is the number 50. Mm-hmm. Now, what does 50 mean? It means jubilee. Oh, right. It means joy. Yes. It means total freedom because uh, the month, uh, you know, every 50 years, all the debt was, was wiped, wiped out yeah. in Israel. Mm-hmm. Isn't that interesting? When, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, all your debt and sin is wiped out immediately. Mm-hmm. But what they were practicing, you know, Whoever, whatever, whoever was a bondage, whoever the free, whoever was in debt, fifty years is wiped out. Praise the Lord. So that word jubilee and fifty, um, that that also means resurrection life, uh, new beginnings. So when we walk in resurrection life, we are walking in the Holy Spirit and living in the anointing. Now when we when the Lord gave us the name Resurrection Life uh, in, in 30 years ago, we didn't know all this stuff. God just says, you know, you're Resurrection Life. But we've learned a lot in 30 years. Mm-hmm. From glory to glory. The unpeeling, unpeeling the glory, unpeeling the understanding, unpeeling the revelation. The, the, hunger we, the more hungry we are, the deeper he takes us in. And that's what you have to be, is hungry for God. All right, so let's, uh, yeah, we're doing pretty good here. So Shezban, the eighth month, um, there is another scripture that I, I wanted us to read, and and that's Philippians chapter 3. Um, I think that's where I want to go right now. Yeah. No, I'm going to save that one for later. Let's go to Colossians, Colossians chapter 3. One to four. Who's got that? We'll, we'll come back to Philippians later. Colossians 3. Because I want to get back to the new identity because of the DNA and because we're we are not only a new creation, but we are being transformed into his likeness from glory to glory. And in that transformation, do you think there's more light? You know, I, I think I might have start, started off with a two-watt white bulb. How, how, where, what am I, where am I now, Lord, Leslie? Well, by gum, I'd say you've probably gone way up to at least 100 or more. 100 watt? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a few watts short of the light bulb, I think. I've got to keep on working. <laughs> I, I'm going to work on it. Is that okay, Don? Sure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sure, that's right. I could be like uh, Brock and be like an electrician and just go stick my finger in a socket. 
Now I can choose between 120 volt and was it 220 or 240? 240. 240. Yeah. Now, if I was going to make a choice, would it be any different to me whether I stick my finger in a 240 or a 120? I'd probably try 120. Uh, what? Be I'd difference. probably try 120. It'd be easier on the heart. <laughs> <laughs> 120 would be a little easier on my heart. Okay. All right. So I, if I licked my finger and then Don't undid the bulb and went <laughs> like this, whoo, the lights went on. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The lights went on. Do you see that? Okay. I guess if I turn the lights on, I just pull. I got to pull my finger out of the socket, right? <laughs> anyway, 240 is another thing. God will let you put your finger where you're ready, and what you're ready to handle. Okay. For, that, for where for where He needs to needs for you to go. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And. With, with this new identity, you know, the DNA, God is an all-consuming fire and whatever is in a lightning bolt, bolt or whatever is in lava, God's greater, right? Mm -hmm. do, you think, do you think the fire of hell is greater than the all-consuming fire of Adonai Elohim? No. Nope. Mm. Nope, can't touch it. Can't touch it. When we go to heaven, is it going to be a light show? Oh, I think so. Oh, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be all zinged in at a thousand, not two, 240. Not that, that there's any scripture to back No, I'm that. just going to say it's going to be pretty good. Right. It's, going to be, it's going to be a pretty good light show and everything's going to be going good, you know, because he is light. He is. It says in scripture, you know, the light, no it's darkness. going to be the light and there's no darkness in the new Jerusalem. Right. Yeah. And I'm not going to be no 100 watt bulb. Okay. Who's yeah. God? <laughs> Colossians 3 verses 1 to 4. Yeah. Okay, go rock. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Mm -hmm. Oh. Wow. Wow. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ yes, in God. Yes. When did you die? Leslie? Well, this is as far as the world is concerned, you have died. But your new and real life is hidden with Christ in God. Yes. And so when we first... No, it's called the Amplified Version. So, go ahead. Amp, amp, amp it up, honey. Amp Amplify up. yourself up, honey. Amp, amp yourself up, honey. Those little red cheeks. Go for it. You're doing good. Ow. Um, sometimes, sometimes we have to really pay attention to our words here. Yes. And so the words in the Amplified uh, translation says, "For as far as in verse three of Colossians three, for as far as this world is concerned." you have died and your new real life is hidden with Christ in God so we are no longer then part of this world we we no longer belong you know our real identity and who we are is hidden with Christ in God mm -hmm. and so that's that whole new life new being do we still have to walk amongst the things of this world yeah we do but we are not alive to this world it's the spirit of Christ the spirit of Jesus Holy Spirit that's alive in us and because he is then his glory also dwells within us because he is glory and he is the revelation he is the revelation and, and even though we only see in part, we will see in full. And so when Christ, who is our life, in verse 4, appears, then you will also appear with him in the splendor of his glory. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Amen. So in this whole transformation, mm -hmm. in this new identity, this we don't have a DNA crisis. We have a DNA birthing. 
The, the world is in crisis, right? But we are in a place, you know, that the, from glory to glory, when we, if we, when we go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, like 2 to 8, but verse 6 um, and 4, it talks about, I think when you read it out of the voice, or it, it talks that we're co-seated with Christ, right? It's in here, in this one here, it says, you know, it says uh, where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. So in Ephesians 2, verses, uh, I think, 2, 4, 5, and 6, mm -hmm. it talks about something there that we are co-seated with Christ. We are joint heirs. So if we're joint heirs, that means we're brothers and sisters in the Lord. And Abba Father is our Father. He, he has, we have gone through that adoption through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says he'll never leave us nor forsake us nor abandon us. No one's going to snatch us out of the Father's hand. No one's going to snatch us out of Jesus' hand. Wow, what? Th th those are guarantees you can take to the bank. Or uh, heaven. You can bank on it. It's not going to be broken. So, what did you got there? Have you, have you, did you find Ephesians, Ephesians 2? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, this is the Amplified, but... Okay. Um, Let's just stay here for a sec, and then we'll... Okay. I want to get the co-seated. Yeah, yeah, I think that is a different version. Yeah. Um, so, in Ephesians 2, starting in verse 2, and it says, In which at one time you walked... Okay, we might as well start in verse 1. Verse 1, and, and you... And you, he made alive when you were dead, or slain by your trespasses and your sins, in which at one time you walked habitually. You were following the course and fashion of this world, and you were under the sway of the tendency of this present age, following the prince of the power of the air. You were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in sons of disobedience. That is the careless, the rebellious, and the unbelieving who go against the purposes of God. Verse 3, among these we as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves in the passions of our flesh. Our behavior was governed by our corrupt and sensual nature, obeying the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind, our cravings that were dictated by our senses and our dark imagining. We were then, by nature, children of God's wrath and heirs of his indignation, like the rest of mankind. Verse 4, but God so rich in his mercy. I mean, praise the Lord. He is so rich in his mercy. Amen. Because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us, even when we were dead or slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him. For it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve and I did not deserve, that you are saved and delivered from judgment and made partakers of Christ's salvation. And in verse 6, And he raised us up together with him, and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus the Messiah, the Anointed One. Wow. And so, you know, um, yeah, no, I'll just leave that moment. Okay. Now. In, co in coming back, you know, that verse 6, you know, this is a great awakening for us as the sons and daughters of the Most High. In Galatians chapter 4, verse 6, it talks about, you know, those who are believers, those who are followers, are have faith in who we are in Christ Jesus. It says we're sons of God. Yes, I paraphrased a bit. We're going to go there later. But the... The interesting situation here is in 2.6 is that the great awakening is is that our identity or of our iDNA has been from the beginning of time we were, be to sit, we were to be sitting in joint what? Joint what? In, in, the yes. in his heirs but yes. also yes. sitting in that same throne. Yeah. Yes. Brothers as brothers and sisters 
the, the, the bridegroom and the bride sitting together was, is, it was, is, and will be, and, and forever will be the plan. And that's where the real unity is. That's where, yes, amen. Amen. And, and uh, if you can find that, I'm trying to think of that other the, scripture. Or, or the, the voice. Where, was the voice. It, 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 yeah, just, okay. it just said as far as, but I, I think the identity, and it says, he who, over, he yeah. who overcomes oh. is my son or daughter. You are overcomers because of the DNA, DNA that I put in you to walk in that authority that I've given you honor, mercy, grace, and authority to sit with my son on my right hand with all authority. That's where we're going to go in the second part. But suddenly, boom, we're there. Oh my goodness. Boom, we're there in resurrection life. And it's as overcomers, and Revelations 21, uh, 7 says, new beginnings in, in Yeshua. We'll, we'll read it in the ne next segment, but we are the new beginnings in Yeshua. We are the new beginnings in the Messiah. We are, we are predestined to be it, sitting in the right hand of God the Father. Do you think you have any authority if he's putting us in there? Rise up! Psalm 90, 94, 16. Rise up, my champions. Come against those evildoers that are coming against the kingdom of God. Rise up, my champions. I have given you all authority. Just believe it, do it, and walk in it. I have transformed you to the earth. I have transformed you to the earth to look and sound like heaven. I've transformed you. I've taken you. I've transformed you in the DNA to earth in the beginning, John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1, 1, creation 1, 1, like last, last week. In the beginning, God did what? He created everything by speaking it into existence. We were, the earth, the, the dirt was spoken into in, in, in in Genesis 1, 26, 22 in there, he says, God takes the earth and blows his Ruach HaKadosh. He blows the Holy Spirit into the earth and Adam comes alive. And earth means blood. First Adam comes alive. Jesus is the second Adam and the last. Mm -hmm. It's all been done. Mm -hmm. We are the answer to what God's alg algorithm is. Whatever that is. He's the one that invented mathematics. He's making it all come together. And we are the answer of heaven coming to earth. How does the Lord's Prayer go? Disciples say, how do we pray, Jesus? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Finished. Absolutely. Done. Word, blood, everything done. On earth as it is in heaven. We are the not only the ambassadors, but we are we are what earth the, we are in, in the best way I'm trying I'm, I'm trying to think and talk too fast. We are the earth that has been birthed out of heaven and heaven who has come to earth and we are to walk and talk in the language of heaven. As it says in uh, Hebrews, 1, uh, Hebrews 11, 1, or Hebrews 1, verses 1 and 2, that the Father speaks in the language of the Son. We are to speak heaven to everybody. And what is heaven, the kingdom of heaven? Oh, man. Uh, Righteousness, joy, peace. And this is the time of joy. So, do you not think it's a great awakening? Do you not think this is a great manifestation? You know, um, in John chapter uh, 14, the, the last verse, it says, I will manifest myself upon you. Well, the Holy Spirit is going to manifest on you, in you, and about you. Why is he going to do that? Because you are heaven's ambassadors in all authority, all words, in DNA, and the devil knows it. You have blood that is righteous and royal on you, in you, and about you. We just know, have to know that royalty of who we are. The demons don't, uh, the devil doesn't want us to know that. So 
in that, so when you look at the revelation of it, when you look at the manifestation of it, what God, God is doing here, it says, call to bring the manifestation of heaven on earth, in earth, which is us, and, and heaven on earth for us to domicile in. And Jesus says to occupy until we return. Occupy until his return. Because all heaven... Not only the glory of heaven rests upon us, but it's in us, in the DNA that we can walk in and go, for, go forth in. What, what they've called us to be, sons and daughters of the Most High. That's what I am excited about uh, this month. Uh, we're going to take a, we're going to take a short break here, but the suddenly that I wanted to talk about here um, is in Acts. If you go to Acts two verse two. Acts 2, verse 2. Who's got that? Yeah. You got it? Okay, go ahead, bro. And, and suddenly there what? came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Okay, now read from one. Now, th that's verse 2. Yes. Now, now, when we read from 1 to 4. Yeah, but okay. but that word suddenly. Does anybody have any other word than suddenly there in verse, uh, chapter two, verse two? Do a word study on suddenly throughout the Bible. You'll love it. You'll love suddenly. Oh man. Okay, so read it again. From one, from one to four. Sure. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound mighty rushing wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance wow suddenly so as we go to break right now the, I, I pray suddenly in your life I pray the manifestation the transformation of everything that's suddenly from heaven upon earth in your life and every part of your life and the fire of God come upon you to give you breakthrough that give you breakthrough in the areas where the enemy is causing um, opposition Isaiah 10 27 it says you know it says that the anointing the anointed one smashes and destroys the yoke of oppression so we thank you right now that the anointed one, Christ is the anointed one, the Messiah, the Yeshua HaMashiach, that comes in suddenly and smashes and destroys the yoke of oppression because of the blood of who he is, was, and always will be and forever in our lives, health-wise, financially, whatever it may be. So that, that is where we're going to end right now. We're going to end in that place of what we've uh, been talking about in the reflection of what this suddenly is all about and the expression of what suddenly is all about and the manifestation of what suddenly is all about. Those three things. And that's where we're going to pick it up in the second half. So suddenly, Acts 2, boom, the fire came down. It was shaking us here in the Westman area. I mean, we really got it. And it, sh and, and it was vibrations. Do you not think God's voice speaking, pay, P-E-Y, doesn't vibrate all that he created? Even the devil can't get away from suddenly and the vibration of his voice. Doesn't matter where he is in hell, he can't get away from the waves and the voice and the thunder of God, and he knows it. And all heaven sits and resides in you in the DNA of who you are and where God wants you to sit. Not because of who you are, but because of the blood of Yeshua Mashiach. Because you are his sons and daughters of the Most High. Let's take a short break. And we'll and we're gonna we'll come back in about five minutes. Well, yes, Don. Finish. Yeah, finish.